we begin with Lions Clubs International, the founding, the first in a series of centennial videos. Nineteen seventeen, a pivotal year in history, a time of immense social and political change. Most of Europe was engaged in World War I, which the U.S. entered that year. In the U.S., cheap labor and the development of the assembly line had led to rapid industrial growth, which in turn brought many social problems. Child labor, crowded tenement districts, high mortality rates, and rapidly spreading diseases were common. Chicago, Illinois, was a center of transportation, architecture, manufacturing, and commerce. It was a magnet for immigrants seeking work. Reformers in Chicago, including Jane Addams, the founder of Hull House, called for improved social conditions in their communities and the country. Among those looking for ways to help others was Melvin Jones, a successful insurance man he was secretary of the Business Circle of Chicago, a lunch club established in part to help its members grow their businesses. However, Jones had a different goal in mind. I am finding out that you do not get very far until you start doing things for others. And I am beginning to believe that I can help some of the clubs, like the circle, to have feelings in their hearts. Jones's words struck a chord with his club and the Circle gave Jones permission to invite similar groups across the country to a meeting to discuss forming a new kind of club. We are now seeking to make our organization international and write to inquire if you would affiliate with us and at some future date, we can adopt bylaws and a name that will be suited to all. June 7th, 1917. The first meeting was held at the Hotel La Salle in Chicago. The Chicago Business Circle and several other groups attended. Dr. William Woods led a delegation called Lions Clubs to the meeting. This group had been registered in Indiana since 1916 and had clubs in a number of other states. Melvin opened the meeting and shared his vision for the new club. The attendees were receptive. Dr. Woods suggested the groups adopt the name Lions and pay dues of $1 per member semi-annually. Melvin and the others seized the opportunity to merge the existing clubs into a new, bigger, stronger organization. And the lion was the perfect symbol. Immediately, Melvin began a letter-writing campaign to attract additional clubs into this new organization more focused on serving others. In August, Melvin and the members of the Chicago Business Circle formed the Lions Club of Chicago, now the Chicago Central Lions Club. October 8, 1917, the first convention of the International Association of Lions Clubs opened in Dallas, Texas, in the Adolphus Hotel. Delegates from 22 Lions Clubs in nine states voted to keep the name Lions and adopted the logo of a lion holding in its mouth a club inscribed International. They also approved a principle that has guided Lions Clubs ever since. No club shall hold out as one of its objects the financial gain of its members. Dr. William Woods was elected president. Melvin Jones was named secretary treasurer and authorized to establish a headquarters in Chicago. At the end of the Dallas Convention, the new International Association of Lions Clubs had 800 members and $72 in the bank. November 1918, the first edition of the Lions Club magazine was published. It contained a copy of the Lions Code of Ethics, which required a lion to aid my fellow man by giving my sympathy to those in distress, my aid to the weak, and my substance to the needy. It also contained news from the clubs about Lions projects for improving waterways, medical clinics, and public libraries. 
Lions were also active with many youth projects, including fundraisers for children's hospitals and Boy Scouts. Having fun while helping others was part of Lions from the beginning. A clothing drive for veterans led to an unusual sight of Lions parading down the street of their town. By 1919, Lions had grown to 42 clubs across the U.S. with more than 2,300 members. Some of the early clubs had women members, but soon the Constitution and bylaws limited membership to men. It would be almost 70 years, until 1987, before women were again welcomed as members. In 1920, Lioness clubs were established. Many women served alongside family members who were lions. Also in 1920, in Ontario, Canada, Lions established the Border Cities Lions Club, now called the Windsor Lions Club. It was then that Lions Clubs became international. 